Greetings to you from wherever you are watching us tonight. Thanks for joining us on the first edition of the show for the week. We promise to make it worth your while. From the city of Lagos, right here in Nigeria, I'm Yemi Adebayo. It's always a delight to have you join us to talk sports in London. I'm Austin Okonapan. Yemi, so much talking points coming from the final day of the English Premier League. It happened on Sunday. Today is Tuesday. The conversations are still, you know, hurting up right here in the United Kingdom. You know, people just can't get over the season. And I'm saying, can this season just go? Because it brought so much drama. Yeah, and of course, the good news today, uh, the all, Chelsea got it all clear for the change of ownership to take place. We'll talk mm -hmm. about that uh, in detail as well. And, and something from Roland Garros that melted my heart today also. Joe Wilfred Song uh, calling it quits. And I mean, yeah. he got an emotional send off for, for the Frenchman, uh, the Mohamed Ali look like. Uh, hopefully, we get some, <laughs> some chance to uh, talk about that as well. Well, let me attempt a quick um, rundown of uh, what to expect on, on the show tonight, oh. Austin. Tonight, yeah. we'll talk some wrestling. It was a good outing for uh, Nigeria at the African Wrestling Championship. We will talk about that. We will also talk about uh, the fallout of. Uh, the, the meeting that the sports minister had, uh, as a matter of fact, he hosted uh, the Flying Eagles. It was a 3-1, met with the Scrabble guys, the Flying Eagles, mm -hmm. and they also uh, used that opportunity to talk about the crisis in the basketball house. So we'll discuss all of that in detail as we move on on the show tonight. And we will also uh, talk about Manchester City, uh, a city that, that is known to be red and beginning to paint it blue. Uh, and it's blue uh, all the way. I mean, fourth title in five years. We'll talk about that as we move on on the show. Man the new Manchester United manager, Eric Ten Hag, also speaking. We'll talk about that. Then we'll also talk about tomorrow, UEFA Conference League, the inaugural edition. Uh, will Jose Mourinho win that and set a new record? We'll wait to see. And if time allows us as well, we will also talk about uh, Roland Garros, the French Open, and see what is going on right there. All right, so that's the outlook of uh, the show. We're not going to be doing this alone. We have a special guest lined up. Hopefully, it will come true uh, for us. And also, we have uh, uh, people also joining us, as usual, on Tuesday, right here with me in the Lagos studio. Kane Idris joins me. Let me welcome Kane Idris. Kane Idris, greetings to you. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show tonight. Um, good to be here. Always looking forward to Tuesday night and uh, sports tonight. So it feels good to be here. And also um, waiting always to hear the lineup from you. And it's a beautiful one. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day, a beautiful things to uh, talk about uh, as well. All right, Austin, like I said, let me go back to you quickly. Um, good outing for Nigeria uh, at uh, the wrestling uh, championship in Morocco. As a matter of fact, every athlete we took to that place won us a medal. That was how good the outing was for Nigeria. And as usual, the girls were so good on the mat, were counting gold medals, silver medals, as if it was going out of fashion. Uh, what a good performance Team Nigeria had uh, in there. And you know, earlier I was talking about hoping that our guest will uh, come through for us. But let me just let the cat out of the bag. We were hoping uh, to get to have a conversation with the president of uh, the Nigerian Wrestling uh, Federation. Hopefully, uh, it will come true for us. But also, what else can we say? What else can we say about these guys always bringing smiles to our faces? Yeah, you know, that's, that's, just, that's the story of, you know, uh, putting the right people in the right places. You know, and Daniel Igali has shown that with passion, you can achieve whatever you want in this, in this world of sports. Wrestling, Arguably, in the last eight to ten years, has, has been on the rise in Nigeria, and is due to, you know, good leadership and administration. But yeah, I mean, there's still that big elephant in the room, and it's funding. And hopefully, when Daniel Igali comes, he's going to elaborate more on it because, despite the fact that we went with eight wrestlers, we got four gold, two silver, and two bronze medals. Uh, Mr. Igali is still frustrated. He's, he's frustrated because for the first time in so many years, 
we lost the female title to Tunisia. It ended 170 to Nigeria uh, in total points amassed and 179 for Tunisia. And, and he's saying like, that this is the problem because we're not growing, we're not investing, we're not supporting wrestling that has been doing so well uh, for the country. Blessing Oburududu, for instance, that's all right there on your screen, she won 11th, 11th African title. What else do you want to say about Oduan Yuadikuru? Now, nah, younger sisters joined the mix. So it means they always go out there and give Nigeria a good representation. But some way, somehow, um, the ministry, uh, we know funding is a problem, but how about you support this sort of athlete? She went to the Tokyo Olympics, gave us silver medal. Oduan Yuadikuru gives the country good representation. Uh, we've talked about this wrestlers over and over and over again. So Daniel Gali cannot understand why I was still struggling. And I remember when I had an interview with him so many years ago in the, in the Lagos studio, he said, Austin, under my watch, we will not lose this female title. Under his watch, we've lost it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, well. Let me quickly, let me just announce that Daniel Gali is with us, and uh, we'll just go straight uh, to him now. Uh, greetings to you, sir. Thanks for uh, finding out time to uh, be with us on uh, the show. I guess I should say congratulations are in order. Thank you very much. Uh, you guys have always supported lesser known sports like wrestling, and I'm really happy to be on your show this week. All right, let's just get straight into it. As you know, I'm, I'm of, of course, I do this with my colleague, Austin Okon Akpan, who um, started off uh, by talking about uh, what to you um, was the high point. We're busy celebrating the fact that we did well, but to you, it could have been more. And so we, we, want to, we, want to, we want to hear it from you. Uh, what, what could have happened differently? Because we seem to be celebrating that, okay, every athlete we took to 11, they all got medals. But it, it feels like, it feels like you feel we could have done more. You know, where wrestling is the victim of the very high uh, standards we set for ourselves. Um, you will remember at the 2018 African Championship we hosted in Port Harcourt. The female team won nine gold and one silver medal out of ten. Uh, of course, we have uh, a newly rebranded team. We have some new entrants to the team. Um, so out of eight this time, we got uh, four gold, two silver, and two bronze. But I, I think for me, the Hitler Street part of it is we didn't go with 10 wrestlers. Um, Tunisia had been on our tails for a while, and this really started coming to the fore after the 2016 Rio Olympics, where for the first time in female wrestling, uh, Amri, uh, a Tunisian wrestler, won a, a bronze medal. And from 2016 to 2021, the, the Tunisian government has been spending up to about $500,000 per year on Tunisian wrestling. So they've been very close to us. Though we've been winning the larger number of gold medals, but when you have 10 people and everybody places, it gets quite close. This time, we were able to only go with eight. They came with 10. Only won two gold medals and four silver medals, uh, two bronze medals, a fifth and a sixth place but still five us to the same title. And, and that, for me, was a bit hard to take, to be honest with you. OK, um, I, 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 get, I get that. And Austin said we should address the elephant in the room. Maybe we'll get to that when, when he begins uh, to, to speak. But I mean, here we sit down, we celebrate all the things you've your federation has achieved, uh, and the athletes. And when we listen to you, we know how difficult it is to get, you know, get the athletes, get all of those things, cross a lot of orders to give Nigeria uh, quality uh, representation. But, but there, there's a fear in the hearts of many that after this crop of wrestlers, do we have the next generation? Will funding become an issue? for the next generation of wrestlers to take over from the current set doing so well for us? Funding has always been an issue, even for the current set. 
Um, and, and, and that has always, of course, you know, that has always been my word. And the, anytime we have that conversation, we're told you should go look for fun and you should go look for sponsors. And, and that is all fine and good until you also look all around the world. And I have done a lot of research on lesser sports like wrestling. And my research tells me that probably U.S. is the only country that I know that has about 40% of their funding coming from sponsors. Uh, the other 60% still comes from uh, the NOC and within the system and government. And every other country, in fact, countries like Korea, Japan, that even have sponsors. The sponsors are coordinated by the government. In fact, almost sports to sponsor sports. And Iran, Germany, everybody else has about 90% of their funding from government. So when we have this discussion about you should go get sports, sports is only funded by government. When the Nigeria Wrestling Federation goes to wrestle, it's not one company's name it's preparing. It's actually government. Yes, we would really like to have uh, companies, individuals come and fund sports, but government plays their role. And let me not also uh, be mistaken for uh, saying that the federal government is not doing their business. In fact, the Minister of Youth and Sports has been really hands on with us. And that is why we're even able to go to this corner. But if we must give the kind of attention we want to give to wrestling, we must fund wrestling to a level where we can compete very well internationally. For a team that can have top ranked athletes, two, three. Okay. Um, it, it does appear like we're having issues uh, with uh, Dana Legali's signals, but once once we get that sorted, uh, we, we, we'll get back to it. But but also a quick response before we get uh, Dana Legali back. You, uh, okay, I, I guess it's back. So uh, let me allow you to finish with what you're saying, then I hand you over to Austin. I think what I was saying, I don't know if you didn't get me well. I said I said for a sport like wrestling. And that over the past uh, 10 years has won about 10 world medals. Over the past 10 years has been to about three Commonwealth Games and won about eight to nine gold medals. For a sport like wrestling that, that goes to the, the African Championship and dominates the female team, in fact, even the male team dominated up until just recently when we are you know, kind of catching up now because of funding issues. When you don't have your athletes compete at all in, female wrestling, in male wrestling, uh, you, you don't expect them to do well. And that is what's happening, and I think and hope that we should get a lot more support funding by. Let me still stay with this funding issue, Dan and Igali. Um, after Tunisia won that bronze at the Rio Olympics, the government sat up do you know that since 2016, they spent almost $500,000 to, to fund wrestling? And with that, they are in good position. They've overtaken Nigeria in Greco-Roman, in freestyle wrestling, and the one you don't want to hear, the female title. Does this worry you? Because it doesn't seem like it's going to change. And you've just talked about wrestling, having our elite athletes who've gone, who've won the Commonwealth Games, who've won championships. How can the ministry assist? How can corporate bodies assist? Because Egypt is coming. Algeria is coming. More worries, Daniel Igali. Exactly. Um, the minister has really tried. In fact, I, I give a lot of kudos to him because he comes to all our events. And when we send memos to the federal government, he actually takes a personal interest in ensuring that we get some. So this is not like uh, kicking anybody at the minister of sports. This is more that sports needs to get more fun. Uh, we're not getting enough. And that is why a lot of sports can't see where they are. Look at boxing, look at weightlifting, look at taekwondo, karate. All these combatant sports, in fact, the sports that we were even doing a bit better at. Athletes must compete about four or five times international. We must have our cadet uh, championships two, three a year. Junior championships, we must fund our younger athletes to the African championships, uh, junior world championships, world championships. 
that's the only way it's possible, bro. Right now, we don't have that. Uh, the whole of this year, wrestling, only let no do do uh, and Kola Wale Esther have, have, have competed once. Every other athlete had not competed. So I'm not even too worried about the results we had. Of course, any other federation in Nigeria that goes to an African championship with 11 hours, wins, four gold, uh, two silver, and four bronze medals will be on top of the moon. But for wrestling, is it's a victim of a very high standard. So we feel going with 11 athletes and winning four gold medals is wrestling below our standard. But we must talk about funding. Now, let me talk about the issue of Blessing of Borodudu. Blessing of Borodudu is a silver medal from the Olympics. The first medal we have won in 40 years of existence as a sport in Nigeria. And as I am talking to you, Blessing of Borodudu does not have one sponsor. Not one. Apart from the, the biotech state government that sponsors are to competitions and the federal government, we don't have one individual sponsor or company. She only has one clothing company from the United States of all places that funds our, our clothing and gives her allowances for winning national championships and African championships. But not one in Nigeria. And we talk about loving sports. And I think for me, that is the, the dilemma that we're facing. That sports that do well, sports that have good administrators need support, but we don't, except the little bit that comes from the federal government. And for sports like wrestling, the support that we get from the bios of this government. Hopefully we'll get more persons, you know, coming to support wrestling that has done so well for the country. Let's talk about the talent base. You know, we, we've got so much because I follow wrestling and I see that a lot has been done at the junior level. But why are we still struggling with Greco-Roman? Well, we're struggling with Greco-Roman because we don't take Greco-Roman anywhere. We don't have the funds to take Greco-Roman anywhere. Uh, for the past uh, six, six to eight years, uh, apart from the African Championship, where His Excellency Senator uh, Wiki, my, His Excellency Governor Wiki was able to support the full team of Greco Roman to the, the African Championship. For the past 10 years, we've not taken Greco Roman anywhere. If we're lucky, we take one person, we take two people to the African Championship. Wrestling has 30 gold medals. So if we're going to an Africa Games, for instance, we can win 30 gold medals. Right now, for the past few years, we are able to go with 10 of our female athletes. But even freestyle, we can't take all 10. Greg Roman, in fact, we've not been able to take the, the most we've taken to any African campus. It's like two, because we don't have the power. Greg Roman needs a technical, a foreign technical coach. Greg Roman needs a lot of support, even for referees, coaches within the system. But we don't have the form. So what happens is if you have one million naira, you have to put it where you will get the best results, and that is the merit. So it is even beginning to affect freestyle reference because you, you must put your money where you will get results. But we know that we can get results in freestyle, in similar wrestling, and even in Greek Roman wrestling if we give them the attention. Greek Roman is not getting results because they don't have any attention at all because of lack of funds. What was your biggest joy from the just concluded African Championships in Morocco? First, I was very happy that Blessing of Borodudu was able to win a 11th straight African title and did that in very dominant fashion without giving up the point. But I think for me, knowing that we need young athletes coming into the system, my joy was in seeing Messi Adekoroye at the 53 kilogram class in our first African championship, being very dominant, you know, dominating everybody by superiority from number one to our sixth match. And also uh, Jumoke uh, Adekoye, who also came into our first uh, senior, they are both 20, by the way. Uh, Messi is 20, Jumoke is 20 years old, going to our, senior, our first senior African championship and winning it very dominantly at the 65 class. That means that you have a lot of uh, talent in the sport, but also a lot of prospects. You have a lot of hope that when the likes of Bless Mokorodudu live after the next Olympics, that there are those that, that will carry on from that. 
I must say thank you so much, Daniel Igali, for your time. You know we love you and what you do for wrestling in, in Nigeria. So stay focused and keep winning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My thanks to the governor of IELTS State and to also the Minister of Youth and Sport for uh, being able to support us with this last African Thank you so much. So that's it. The president of the Nigeria Wrestling Federation, Daniel Igali, reviewing what went down at the Africa Wrestling Championships in Morocco. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, Akaldi Idris will tell us what he thinks about everything that Daniel Igali talked about. So don't go anywhere. Stay. <laughs> All right. Uh, man, I was close to tears watching um, Joe Fred Songa. Uh, if you were able to see that, I mean, calling it quits and um, ending his career. He wanted to go far, but of course his shoulder wouldn't allow him. All right, let's move on uh, on the show. Um, Kenny Idris, we don't really have much time, but you listen to Daniel Gali. Your takeaway. Um, I, I was I was saying it to you off air. I said um, sometimes when you set your priorities right, I think by now wrestlers in Nigeria should be should be sports. They, they should be the ones saying, mm -hmm. I think this is getting too much. <laughs> Relax it a bit. The kind of incentives, the kind of you know uh, warfareism that they get, um, uh, uh, facilities here and there. Now. We talk Bayosa, Bayosa, and wrestling all the time because they are the only state that are taking that initiative to that level to help professional wrestlers up and around, you know, the country where if you have to be the best around the world and you're a wrestler in Lagos, yeah. you just must ship down to Bayosa. So right. I, I think we need to do more because almost every time they are made up prospect, they are a promise, you know, to give us something beautiful. So the, the, the president, Daniel Ligal, is saying all of, everything he said, right. everything boils down to we're not giving enough to priority. Yeah. Um, well, let's just quickly show you, because we, t we told you 11 athletes that we took there won medals. Let's just allow you to see the composition. There you have it on your screen. Uh, and, of course, the Federation president highlighted that these are the ones that won gold medal. Mesa Adekuroe, Jumoke, uh, Adekoye, Odunayo, Adekuroe, Blessing of Borodudu, all, all of these female athletes won gold. And for the silver, uh, you have the names on your screen. You have two silver, two bronze. The uh, eight uh, wrestlers, all female. Yeah. Now let's go on and talk about the guys. Was, was it decent performance? No gold medals, but well, uh, a silver the and two have always been. I've always stood yeah. <laughs> out. So uh, it was uh, four, three, four, yeah. and uh, so that, that was the composition of the of the medals that we won. A uh, good one uh, for Team Nigeria. Let me just let, let's just end the discussion on wrestling uh, just by saying this. Daniel Gali, before he left us, said, "And we claim we love sports." in Nigeria. We have an Olympic silver medalist who has no sponsor. We claim we love the sports in Nigeria. We claim we love the, the sports. sports. Well, let me, let me just let me exactly. make it bigger. <laughs> we claim we love sports in Nigeria. That shouldn't be happening. That shouldn't should uh, be happening. And uh, hopefully those who are listening to us, I mean, we'll, we'll do the needful, do the needful. And so, so that we can encourage athletes in Nigeria to give their best, knowing fully well they will be supported all the way. All right, let's move on uh, on the show. Uh, of course, we also have uh, one of our guests joining us on the show uh, tonight. He probably has been listening uh, to us. Let's see if we can quickly uh, bring him in on the show. Joseph Atawa joins us now as we continue with the discussions in and around sports and um okay when, we, when we're ready we'll we'll bring bring him on. all right so uh joseph greetings to you thanks for finding out time uh to be with us on the show tonight you you are in in the middle we've had some discussions in and around wrestling but first let me just welcome you as we uh, talk about the other issues left uh, on the show tonight Hi, good evening, Jamie. And of course, I think I saw Austin not quite long and I'm saying that you guys look really good. And of course, just as I said, a friend of the house, I've seen you guys so many times because you look good tonight. Uh, but then what you've said, and Donald the Gandhi can't be wrong. If we say we love athletics, I mean, it means we must push them uh, to that stage. Uh, if we say we love athletics, we must give them the needed support. And that we've not done in a while. Um, of course, 
you look at the Olympics, the last Olympics, and see what happened, most especially with a basketball team, it says a lot and how truly uh, we love other sports because I think a priority lies with uh, football. Uh, but then Ghana the Gali has said it all, and we just must agree with him. All right, we just must yeah. uh, agree. Uh, so let me just pass the baton back to uh, Austin before uh, we get into uh, football. Austin, like we said earlier, uh, the sports, uh, sports minister uh, had a whole session of meetings. I uh, met with uh, the under-20 uh, Wafu B team, met with the Scrabble guys, and they also had time to talk about what's going on in the basketball family in Nigeria. But first, let's just talk about, uh, I'll pass the baton yeah. to you, but uh, about football, uh, he seemed quite happy that uh, the Flying Eagles were able to win the Wafu, uh, Wafu B on the 20 championship. But you know, when, when there's pressure and um, we achieve victory, no matter how small it is, it, it's a good relief. So the ministry actually wanted that victory and the Flying Eagles, you know, brought it so that, you know, to take off the pressure and all of the, the talks that have been coming out of the suspension to, to, for, uh, for basketball. Uh, shout out to Ladambuso and the boys. They, they, they went there, you know, promised to win, and they did just that. They didn't just win, qualified for the under-20 AFCON, uh, which is a good one. That's a good one for pro progression because these guys are young. So the minister says, well done. Uh, the Scrabble team also uh, went to the West African Championship, won. Scrabble has been making us proud also. So, so it tells you once again, just like the discussion we're coming from with Daniel Igali, we have the talent, but somehow we know the things that are pulling us back. Administration, uh, leadership, lack of proper policies for development, uh, poor welfare. You heard what Daniel Igali said about blessing the Borududu. Those are the things Sunday Diary must find a way to change because we, we, we should change these things. They shouldn't continue. So congratulations once again to the Victorious Flying Eagles team, to the Scrabble team. Let's listen to Sunday Diary. Uh, he's been reacting right after uh, this, this hosting. This is just the one. For me. We, are we are now trying to prepare for the Nations Cup and the World Cup proper. This little achievement will not be possible if the ministry, the federation, and by large, the federal government are not being on our side. Before we were announced, I've gone around almost everywhere to pick these players. And I want to tell you, sir, that the players you are seeing is devoid of no interference from any now. These players made this team on merit. Most importantly, most importantly, sir, that uh, the Federation gave us this platform because we were the first arrival in Niger. FIFA <clears throat> commits extensively to the development of youth football. Any country that departs from the development of youth football does so at its peril. What becomes of a national team is the byproduct of the under 17, under 20, the youth, the domestic league in the country. Most of you play for uh, clubs in the country, don't you? So the lesson is very clear. The message is out there that this country will continue to focus working with the federation that has the mandate to develop our football, to make sure that youth development, when it comes to football, male or female, gets the deserved attention, the deserved support. We will not take our eye off the ball. We will be consistent. Mm. I think you said the right things here. I mean, I don't know about you, Kendi, Dries, and uh, uh, Joseph Atewe. To Joseph, um, okay. I, I think I just want to say something here. I feel like okay. uh, Vladan also he said a lot, and even the sport minister also said a lot. But then uh, I've said so much about our uh, eight-grade competitions, the under-17, the under-20. I think I pointed out to Austin, I think it was 2016 when I was in Lagos, and I spoke to you about a national team, how we should 
have won more than three African Cup of Nations, how we should have gone past the round of 16 of the World Cup. That is if we take care of our age grade competitions. It's no news that when it comes to the under 17 World Cup, we've done really well. The under 20, but then when it comes to the national team, there is always a problem. I'm not trying to take away the shine from uh, the team, the Flying Eagles that won the Waffle B competition. I'm not trying to take away the shine from them. But I'm saying, what are we going to do with these guys? The progression. Are we taking them to the national team? Are these the guys that will represent us in the next three, four years when it comes to major competitions in the world? You flash a man by to 1999, the Cesc and the rest. So the Cruz, I think 2006 or thereabouts, these guys, well, most of them have retired from international football, but played a great football played to the best of the best of competitions during their time. So what are we doing with these guys? It goes past winning the Wafu B. It goes past winning the Under-20 Nations Cup or the World Cup. What are we doing to these guys? How can we integrate, uh, integrate these guys to the national team, the senior national team, not bringing guys from different leagues? It takes time to gel. And that is why teams like Brazil, Germany, name it, will continue to win the World Cup and progress when it comes to major competition. Right. I agree with you. And, and I guess there's nothing to hard. I don't want to be a killjoy, and uh, neither do I want to be a spoiled sport. But I just hope when the MRI and all of those things is conducted, <laughs> that team uh, will not be depleted. I hope that is done already. But like I said, I don't want to be a killjoy. And uh, Joseph has said everything, so let's, let's just quickly uh, move on. Austin talked about Scrabble. One of the things the sports minister also attended to uh, was uh, uh, the guys that did us proud. And of course, he said at that occasion that the federal government, uh, of course, uh, is reaffirming his commitment to the development of Scrabble in uh, the country. Of course, he said that when he hosted the members and officials of the Nigerian Scrabble team that conquered West Africa at uh, the Maiden sub junior Championships held in Accra. Let's quickly listen to the sports minister that will come back for more on sports tonight. Our performance like this is not uh, by happenstance. It's a result of hard work. We have a very active Scrabble security in Nigeria. Virtually every month we have a function. In our midst, we have champions. I remember when you came and you were asking who is the national champion. And the world champion got up, the national champion got up, the African champions got up. And you said, oh, no wonder you are feeling some heavy weight above you because we are all above you. With the, yeah. the room champions, field, champions. you know. So we we played in uh, 12 African champions, uh, championships to date, and out of the 12, we won 11. People often make a mistake. They think Scrabble is not an important game. It is important when you look at the mind games. When you look at the global status it has attained. It's not everybody on the street that can play Scrabble. You need the presence of mind, you need the discipline, you need precision, a mind that is precise, that is a bit corny, that is tough, that can dribble the brain. So, so Scrabble is one of the top mind games. And um, if you excel in, in, in Scrabble, it's going to be almost impossible for you not to excel in your other endeavors in life. We will renew our commitment and support to the Scrabble Federation and its players. We will go on from this victory to see how we can deepen the training of other younger uh, Scrabble players, potential players, how we can have more competitions in country. Once we have your programs, we will look at them provide the funding necessary. All right. An applause uh, for the comments made by the sports minister from the members of the Scrabble Federation and the players, especially when you hear a high-ranking government official telling you that, let's know your programs. We're ready to support. We'll give you all the best that we have. Kendi Idris, I mean, that is heartwarming. That if, is heartwarming. If they get um, what they've been promised.
Yes, uh, you know, these words are sweet to put out there. They are so nice uh, to the ears, uh, but the coming days, months, years will now tell us what it is. Are you keeping to what you're saying? Yes, we're seeing this championship very nice. Uh, you know, all of the participants, uh, the winners and all, all happy going home. We got something to participate in and then we're winning also. But we're saying on the larger scale, how well are you going to stand by what you said today? Not just uh, today's minister, but we're talking in making it a template where <clears throat> any other minister would just come, matter who is there. just come in, key in, and then it's still the same of the same. It doesn't uh, feel different when there are a different man is there. All right, so let's uh, quickly uh, move on on the show and uh, go to football. We're done with, with Scrabble. Let's quickly go to uh, football now. And, and, of course, we're going to yield the floor to Austin because it's his backyard. But let's talk about the guys painting the town blue, Manchester City. Four in five, it has been for them. Some nervy moments, uh, some of the things Austin discussed when in, in his opening remarks. Uh, I mean, they made... <laughs> their, their fans almost fainted at the ETR. Looked like they were going to come close and lose it. But then again, they fought back and, and they won it. And, I mean, title celebrations. I mean, they've worked so hard. I mean, Austin, when you see this, I guess <laughs> there's nothing left to say than to say that Manchester is blue. Let's give it up to them. They showed some level of admirable class, you know, all season. Remember when they lost to Crystal Palace 2-0 at the ATR? That was reality check for them. And since then, they started cruising, you know, got pr some pressure from the Champions League. But the moment they got into that fight with Liverpool, we knew it was going to be difficult. And that was where they showed character because they went on to win the games that they needed to win, you know, even when Liverpool dropped a point against um, when they played Tottenham, uh, Pep's team stayed focused, went on to win, and, and there you go. So right here in the UK, fans of Liverpool, they're, they're saying that Liverpool didn't give that game the sort of approach that they should give on that final day, that if they were, probably thrashing Wolves like 5-0, wherever Manchester City would have been, they would have known that there was serious problem, and there's some way that the fans would have communicated it to them and it would have just been over but that they were trailing against Wolves and the, you know fans will come up with a lot of things but nothing takes away the quality of this Manchester City team led by this top class manager Pep Guardiola. All right, let's just quickly listen to, uh, let's take some reactions from that uh, title celebration, that, uh, I mean, victory parade and come back for more sports tonight. This is the toughest league and in five years or six years since we arrived forward. So in the happiness in your faces, so this is the best reward we can get. Absolutely. Thank you so much guys during all this season for your amazing support. For all of us and especially for me, for my country, for Ukrainian people, thank you so much. I love you so much and <laughs> All right, uh, Alexander Zinchenko there. All right, um, Kenny, quick one. We're pressed yeah. for time and a lot of ground to cover. What else left to be said about City? There is nothing left. Um, even at the time, his dominance was up there. So Alex Ferguson, the highest they ever amassed as a winning coach was 91 points. At the time, Man City did 98. This time, they are doing 93. This team will go now in Easter as one of the best teams. And in if it was Premier. less, they would have lost. They would have lost, exactly. I'm saying, even at 91, and the entire world was looking at mm -hmm. Alex Ferguson's team yeah. as an untouchable team. Now we're seeing almost every time mm -hmm. this team hits 90 under Pep Guardiola. I think it's just a team that, you know, while we're still living it now, might not be so sorry. When we read about it, we'll go back to thinking this was what they did at that time. I think this team is is, is massive. It's it's a great team already. All right. Let me go to Joseph. So a, a, a quick response from you, Joseph. We now have the hero where is uh, Jurgen Club, Pep Guardiola. They've replaced. Alex Ferguson and Azar Wenger, the, the ones we grew up knowing, that kind of rivalry. But talking about this dominance, how far do you think it's, it's going to last? Do you think four or five years? Or do you think maybe Ten Hag will come and just Ten Hag, maybe Antonio Conte will just stop 
us just talking about Klopp and Guardiola all the time? Well, I, I think I want to speak on what Austin said. Austin said something that um, I think Liverpool had lost the title. There was a point where, I, I think it was after the first 45 minutes, we were playing one all. And at that point, maybe if Liverpool had led that game at halftime, it would have been a different case entirely. But the guys went back to the dressing room, saw the result, and believed that they're still all to play for. So Liverpool left it too late. And for Aston Villa, um, I think the coach in uh, what's the mind of Steven Gerrard made a mistake. Uh, I think Macamba, what's his name, was a mistake to have brought in. If you look at the goal, Rodri score and um, the last goal by Ike Godwin, those were a huge mistake by a professional. Uh, professionals, rather. They shouldn't have allowed that. But then talking about Manchester City, uh, for the last five seasons, it's been City-Liverpool. And I think this dominance will continue. Look at what Manchester City is doing at the moment. They brought in Ellen Drude Haaland from, um, what's his name, the name right there, Borussia Dortmund. We're not yet confirmed, but we believe we'll be joining the blue side of Manchester City. It means they want to score more goals. It means they want to retain the title. It means they want more than the Premier League. They want to win the UEFA Champions League, which has eluded the cabinet at the moment. They got to the final against Chelsea. We're very unlucky because they faced a very experienced side in Real Madrid. Uh, so give it to Manchester City. Uh, I, I, just like I told Austin in 2015, I don't know if you remember, I told him that Cameroon was going on to win the Nations Cup, which, of course, they connected to a spot on this in Omar Kati, but uh, there was a problem, but they went on to win. I'm telling you right now again that with the introduction of Haaland, Manchester City will win that title once again. We dub you the octopus of sports tonight. All right, that's the title <laughs> <laughs> we're giving to you. But, but, but also, um, I mean, what else can we say? Ted Hag at his first press conference says, um, look, there's nothing on the line. I'm not taking a risk with my United. These guys have potentials. Uh, and, you know, these guys have potential. And that's what he's saying. And he's the one that is coming up. We, we may not be able to listen to him, but I just want you to say something about that. Now, look, the dominance of Klopp and Guardiola, he thinks, he thinks it, it might come to an end uh, in a few seasons. He, does, he doesn't see them going on, on and on and on. But what's your take on that? I'll just say what some of the guys uh, on Talk Sports said. They said you should just shut up. But that now, right now, you shouldn't be talking so much that you should keep quiet. Because <laughs> just, if, if, he had, if he did say that Manchester United has quality, it would have been out of the club next week. So he needed to say those things that he said. But he's got a lot of work to do with this Manchester United team. First, he needs to massage the ego of the owners and put them in one corner so they can let him work. That's the first problem for him. And then this United team, the guys who have too much money and feel that they're not playing for the money, needs to let them know it's either you play for this club or you leave. But Ten Hag, you know I like him here, man. He's got so much quality and, and he's a developmental coach. You know, when you have that sort of mindset that you can take a team from this point to this point, you succeed. And that's why he's got a good success story. But with United... They're like a team in the incubator, you know? So you, you need to monitor them properly and make sure that they survive. I think that's what he has to do. All right. Uh, Ken Idris, quickly. He has not started his job. He's been pictured with under 15 guys, under 20 guys. And people are already saying it looks like that's the direction he wants to go. He might not be able to get all the players he wants, but he might just be injecting fresh blood. Yeah, me? You will take those pictures until reality hits you. <laughs> and then there's pressure of achieving today. Patience has gone out of football. There is so much money flying around. They talk about Paul Torres, 80 million and all of that. This is the kind of money that fly around. I won't give you one season, two seasons to want to experiment. I want to achieve it now. I want Eric Ten Hag to come in and Manchester United is discussed in the same light with Liverpool, Tottenham, uh, Manchester City and all of that. And you Chelsea, think that's the mindset of the Glazers? That is what it is. They want to hit the next level right now. That wow. is why they keep chopping and changing. So there is no patience. I return now. Continue to do all of the talks, all of the taking pictures. When reality hits you, after 19 games in your work, and then it looks like you're around eight position or nine, they'll start to ask you, what are you, developmental work? What, work? Are, you what developing? are you doing, actually? <laughs> ask Chelsea and Lampard. It is what it is. And with the extension of Pep Guardiola, 
and also your game club 2024 2026 all right i think the war <laughs> the war okay. looks like way tougher uh, 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 all right we're, we're pressed for time but uh we're, we're going to be leaving soon but we can't leave without talking about the uefa conference uh league uh roma final uh, and it looks like a lot of people are already saying probably uh jose Mourinho really loses finals but you know you never can tell uh, he leads its team out uh, against um, Feyenoord. uh let me go to joseph first before we let you go uh, in, in about 30 seconds uh, not too much of elaborate explanation who do you think is going to win tomorrow's final Joseph, actually, I, 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 wanted, I wanted you. What do you think? You have a Conference League final, Roma final, quick one. What do you think is going to win? Okay, I, I think for me, looking at the Europa League final, sorry about that. I think that was the next one, issue. But then Roma versus Feyenoord. Uh, Feyenoord has done really well. They've done really well to have gotten to the final. But then one thing will come to play tomorrow, which is experience and the caliber of players you have at Roma. You'll see when it comes to football, he's one man that knows how to win. Well, he hasn't gotten the right in the last two years where you want to say, okay, he hasn't been beautiful when it comes to getting results, but then getting to the final of the Europa Conference League, he wants to make a statement. Do not forget, he had it difficult, you know, even making it to that top position in the Italian League. Uh, so I feel like uh, tomorrow is going to be, you might not agree with me, but of course, I'm always right when it comes to prediction. I think it's going to be a one-sided affair. And Roma to go to. Okay, all right, Joseph Atewe, I want to thank you for your time on the show tonight. We'll bring you back thank again you. to talk about it. Uh, can you just we gotta go? Roma final, quick one. My heart wants fire not, but my head really says Roma. Okay. Not not because of uh, just the Mario factor. The guys in the team okay. are also good. All right, my my heart and my head saying the same thing, but I'm not gonna let it out. I can see it on the fence. All right, that's the show today. We do hope you enjoyed everything we brought to you. We're gonna be here again tomorrow. We'll take you on the trip across the money spinning world of sports from the city of lagos right here in nigeria i'm yemi adibaya saying bye bye now i want to leave without saying congratulations to ac milan for winning this kudetu for the first time in 11 years in london i'm austin okonakban in everything you do remember let's keep talking sports bye for now